In this Omer Vision tutorial, I'm going to go over a multiplayer game using the Photon um, networking engine for Unity. Before I do that, though, I want to make sure that we all understand some of these multiplayer game concepts, like the fact that when you have a multiplayer game, one of the first things you have to do is connect to a server. And a server, we can think of it as a building with a street address. A server has an IP address. After you connect to the game server, then you're usually waiting around in a lobby, or you, you will be in a lobby of that server, and then you have to pick a room to go to to play a game with some other people that are in a room. So this is a picture of a lobby and a person coming in to the building. And uh, when you get to that room, finally, you will see the other people here in the room playing the game, and you could jump in and play with them. So that's just a quick overview of some of the concepts, because in the code, we'll use the name server, lobby, and room, especially with the full-time Game, um, networking engine. It has those words in it. Now, here is an example of what this tutorial is going to show us how to do. Here's a, um, a project, which is going to be the end result of this tutorial, where we have a menu scene and we have a game scene. So this is the menu scene where, you know, you're going to like kind of jump into the game. And then there's a level, which is going to be where you play the game. And let me zoom into this, where it's going to be a floor and each player is going to spawn on the floor. I have two spawn spots to pick from. So if you're the first player to jump in, you get that spot. If you're the second player to jump in, you get this spot. So let's see what happens here. This is a game that was, um, what I would do here first is I'm going to build and run the game to show you the uh, multiplayer action here. So I'm building the game. Bum, 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 bum. And uh, here it comes, pops up here. This is uh, one instance and here we are. And um, we have to we connect it to the server and I have a picture of the lobby and then I'm going to say start and it's going to automatically, you know, make a room that we join up in. So you could consider this like the room and I'm the player and it labeled the player with the ID number for the player in the multiplayer game. And then over here in Unity, I'm going to start up the second instance where, oops, I'm on the wrong screen. Let me go to the menu screen. I'm going to start up the second instance here. Lobby, I'm connected to the same server. Then I start and it joins a room and there I am. Bulldog 2. So you can see here that the level has two bulldogs in it, one from this instance and one from the instance right here in Unity. And if I move a bulldog in one instance, it moves in the other one too. So that's what we're going to go over how to do in this Unity um, video. In this video, the tutorial of how to use Photon with Unity, um, I'm going to organize it into a couple of steps so that it's easy for us to remember all the things we have to do. The first step is uh, if we want to use Photon in Unity, uh, we have to actually register on the Photon website. And, you know, that can be done by going to photonengine.com. Bam. And if you are not a member yet, you could become a member by just pressing the register button that would be there. And after you register, you'll be able to come here and see my different applications. All right, so I kind of created a new app. This is for Photon Test 1. That's this application I made here. I just named it the same. But the thing that associates this server to my Unity program is going to be the app ID. So when I kind of create a new app, I can give it a name. It's going to be the app ID that's going to say uh, my Unity game is going to use that Photon server. All right, so after that, step two is to download Photon from the asset store into my Unity game. So now is the part where... We're just going to do this together from scratch. So I'm going to start a new Unity project. And we're going to do it together. Let me just put this, boop, minimize that, and come over here to Unity Hub. And I'll start another um, Photon tutorial here. So I'll call it new. And I'll just call this Photon Tutorial. Now don't you guys, it'll be a 3D project. And then I'll create it. <coughs> and I'll let Unity do its thing. And then Unity opens up, we have a brand new 3D project. So the first thing we have to do is have a game that we want to photon up. So I'm just going to like create a scene here with a game. Um, let's make a floor. So this part, you know, you just hurry through it. But I have to make something that we're going to have a game for, right? So here we go. 50-50. This is the floor. Then I'm going to have... Um, Okay, then from the um, demo, what I'll just do is I'll drag and drop some of the things I was using, like the models. That's the model of the bulldog. And uh, I'm going to need the textures and the materials, just nice textures and materials. All right. So the models, well, let's put a material on the floor. And I think it was this. No, it was this. I had this for the floor. And then um, 
we have a model of a dog, a bulldog that we were using. So hi, bulldog. I'll put him in there. But we're going to have to change him into a prefab that we're going to actually instantiate for our player. And Photon, the um, prefabs, it loads them from a folder called resources. So we'll make a folder called resources. And OK, before I drag the bulldog into that folder, I just want to add the script <clears throat> that's going to control him. So I have the player script from the demo that I put right here. And then I'll put that on the dog. Oops. It says blah, blah, blah. Um, what doesn't match? Let's see. Do, 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 probably the name of the game. Oh, yeah. It's not going to match yet because I didn't, I didn't install the Photon. So let me close that down. Yeah, so I made a new game. I'm putting objects in the game, but look, I have to download the Photon asset from the asset store. All right, so that's what we're going to do. Let's go to the asset store right here. And if you didn't have that tab there, then you just go window, uh, asset store somewhere in here. Yep, right there. So I'm going to go to asset store, and then I'm going to search for Photon. Pun. Okay, and you can see it's, ugh, it's showing right here. And here's a free one, <laughs> much better than the $95 one. So let me download the free one where I have a limit of 20 users, you know, to log in. So I downloaded this before, but now I want to import it into this project too. So I press the import button and it's going to get all the files. So these are the files that are in there and I'm just going to leave out the demo stuff so I could save some space on my hard drive here. Do -do -do. Yep, I need that real time code. Um, Using networking. I know there's another demo thing in here somewhere. Where are you? I'm going to find you. I'm going to make sure I don't import you. Here's another one. Demo. And how about in the networking stuff? So the cool thing with Photon, I can do chat windows too. But in this tutorial, you know, I'm just going to go over the game. And is that it? Three, three demo folders. All right, so now I'm going to import. And it is importing. OK, now after it imports, it's going to have this little window where it's going to ask you for the um, the ID of the application from um, the server. So here is my Photon uh, dashboard, and this is an application. I could use this ID right here, or I can make another app. So just so you guys can see, I'll just make another app. So I'll say create new app. And oh, I kind of forgot what I picked here. Photon pun, and then the name for my application that's going to show. So Photon tutorial. The name doesn't have to match your project. It's just the name. Okay, and then just those two things, and I'm just going to say create. And now here I have one for the Photon tutorial, and I could copy this app ID. That's what this window wants right here. So let me just go off screen so you can't see what my app ID is. Okay, and I copy that app ID, and now I'll, whoop, now I will paste it in here, paste it, and set up the project. Oh, why do my windows have to lock? Okay. And da -da 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 -da, what is it? Your app ID is now applied to this project. Okay, so close. I'm just uh, why do these windows do this to me? I like my windows floating like paper on a desk. All right, so I installed the Photon blah blah. Now, if you noticed, the settings for the app ID and everything when the Photon thing got installed, they went over here into this file called uh, Photon Server Settings. Yeah, which is in the Photon folder. Photon Unity Networking folder, resources folder. So if you ever want to change the app ID, you can just do it right there. Don't look at that number. Oh, darn it. Darn it. Security. Security is at risk. All right. Um, back to the tutorial. So we got the Photon engine installed. What do we got to do now? Oh, uh, well, I guess my step three, it's not with the game part yet. It's about making the, the menu screen where you kind of log into the game. So let's see. Network controller script. So let's say that this scene was our game level. So I'm just going to save this scene as... Put it in the scenes folder. I would just call this the level that you play. And I'll just say save. And we'll come back to this later. Now let's just make a new scene. This is going to be our menu. So let me save this as the menu. Save, save, save as the menu where we join into the multiplayer game. So we're going to have to have some, you know, UI stuff here. So I'll just add some in. I like dragging my event system into my canvas thing. And this first text here, this will be like the title text title, and the title will be Photon Tutorial. OK, let's go into uh, 2D view here so we could see things. Um, so this text, let's put it in the middle, right? 
And then from the middle, let's also center and center. Okay, so we got that there. Maybe I'll just make it a little bigger. Whoop, whoop. Photon tutorial. And maybe I'll just move it up a little because I'm going to put something like a status here so we can tell the different steps we're going through. So let me put another text. And this one will be called text status. This is just like stuff so we can see what's going on. And I'll put this here, like, I'll just say status. I'm like, what is going on? And I'll have it say centered. Uh, let's make the box bigger. 600, because, you know, maybe there'll be more words in there. Like 80. Just show your status in there. And I guess I'll, nah, I like it centered. And move up a little. Well, I'll just leave it in the middle. And then we'll have a button for start. Okay, so UI, a button, a button, a button. And let's move that button down. And this will be the start button. Hey, where do you put text for you? Right here, text. And we'll call you the start button. Um, yeah, let's name you start button too. So button start. All right, so this will just be like our menu for joining up. And I guess you could have another button like cancel, but don't worry about that. We're just trying to get in the game right now. So here I have this menu screen. Now what I need is, let's see what it says here. Uh, I need a network controller script. I need a script that's going to connect to the server and all that kind of stuff. So let me just make an empty game object, create empty, and name it network controller. It doesn't matter the name of this. It just matters that you have one. And I would put it at the center of the world. All right, so I got a network controller. Let me go back to my assets folder. So I need a script for that. So let me put on a C sharp script and I'll call it network controller. Okay, that this is going to go on, on there. Did I just drag and drop it? Come on, drag and drop. Bam, there you go. All right, now let's edit the script, or let's write the script. So here I am. Uh, I'll make things a little bigger. So um, first things first, I just like cutting this out. I don't need that. I'm going to cut this out. Um, cut you out. Bam. And let me include the photon stuff. So using photon.pun. Yeah, the photon pun. Okay, now... Um, instead of deriving off of mono behavior, we're going to derive off of mono behavior pun, which is from photon pun. And that way we have some values. Well, actually, it's not this. It's mono behavior pun callbacks that we need to derive off of here. So mono behavior pun callbacks. There we go. Let's get all, we can do all the connection stuff. So um, let's think. I guess first thing is I'm going to be interacting with the UI. So let me get a couple of pointers to the UI controls. So I'll have the text status that I need a pointer to, so I could keep setting the status so we can see what's going on. Then I'll have the button, game object, um, button start. That could equal no. And then for a game, you know, I said it could have up to 20 players. So let's just let the user say how many players they want. So max players. And for now, I'll just say four. And then this is also going to have the job of loading a scene. So ah, I don't worry about that. So I have these two publics, let me set them. So here on the network controller, read it, read it, read it. Now I can tell it that from here, this is the text status. Oh, you know what? And from the text status, I just, I really want the text. So why not just put that in? Let's say using unityengine.ui, okay? And then over here, this could just be the, the text object of it. So I can set that instead, okay? So now here we come back. And there, oops, what am I looking at? my network controller. Here we go. So for the text status, I give it the text status. For the button start, I give it the button start. Okay, in there, max player is four. <clears throat> okay, now, what we have to do in the start. So the um, model behavior pun callbacks, it still has everything that model behavior does. It just has some extra stuff for, um, you know, photon. So we still have a start. And in the start, I guess what I want to do is I want to connect. I want to connect to the um, photon network. I want to connect to this guy over here that's just there on the internet for me. So I'm going to say photon network dot and what do they have for connection? Connect this, connect that. I'll just say connect using settings, which means it's going to connect using those resource, uh, using those photon unity network resource settings that I showed you before. So it's going to connect using those settings. I don't have to type anything in. And um, here when it starts, I should probably hide the button start. So button start dot set active false because, you know, I don't want to press start until you connected. Mm -hmm. So those two things are happening in start. Dude. And let's make a function to update the status window. Do, 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 do. Copy. And also output to debug at the same time. So type that. Okay. So now over here, I could just say status. Um, 
connecting to server is what I'm doing. Yeah, so I'm connecting to server. Okay, so we can see that when that's trying to happen. Now, how do we know when we finally connected? Those are um, overrides that we could do on the model behavior pun callbacks. So what an override is, is a function that model behavior pun callbacks already defined, but since they made it a function that has the override property, I could change the functionality without changing the code in model behavior pun callbacks. So I think what I have to do is say public override and then space, let me search for it, um, on connected, on connected. So let's see, on connected to master. So luckily when I write this override, it still calls the regular um, code, okay, that was written in the pun callbacks, but now I could add something extra. So um, first thing I guess I'll add since I connected is I'll update the status that says um, connected to, and I'll say what I connected to, which it is the photon server dot server address. That, that should be good. Server uh, address. That's what I connected to. Why is this like this color? It doesn't, it doesn't know what that is uh, because it's photon network. There you go. There you go. Now you're green. So first thing I do is I update the status like we're connected. And then um, now I can turn on my button start. So button start dot set active true. So now that we're connected, the user can press the button to join the game. I mean, to join something, right? Since we found a server, we connected. Oh, I had status after. I just, I'll just make it like the same order of things here. Move that down like that. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, so let me save that. Let's just test this out to start off with. All right, so we have here um, the network controller. So let me press play. And it says connecting the server. And then it connected and the start button turns on. Good, see, so we connected to a server. We connected to our little server running here. Woohoo, Photon Tutorial based on the app ID. That's how it knew. All right, let's go on. So now we press the start button. We need a function for that. So let's put in, it has to be public so that the start button could hook up to this. Void, button, start, click, not clock. Click. I'll make a function that when I press the start fun the start button, I want to do something. So, um, like I was explained, uh, we connected to the server, so we're in the right building. And now we're kind of like in a lobby, and when we want to um, we want to join a game room somewhere. So it's either like a lobby could display a bunch of game rooms that are available, and we pick one. Or in this case, keeping it simple, I'm just going to say the name of the room that we want to be in. So I'll say room name equals room one. And the room options for this room, room options is a, it's a model behavior thing. Yeah, from the full-time, real-time room options. So let's put that in there, full-time, real-time, oh, full-time dot real-time, full-time dot real-time dot room options. This is gonna be a variable, I'll call it ops, um, equals a new one, do, do, do. Right, now I could say ops dot um, is open equals true ops dot is visible equals true yes yeah, so i guess if it was in a lobby would you be able to see this room yes and most importantly ops dot max players equals our max players that we said in the inspector window from right here all right so this room could take up to max players joining in now a command to join the room photon network dot okay here's a cool one join or <laughs> create room and I give it the room name, and I give it the options, okay? And the third parameter, expected users, it's optional, so I'm not gonna give it. So there we go, photon network, join or create room. Is it optional? Why is it still like this? It says boom, boom. Oh, third parameter is not that, it's type of lobby. Um, okay, so say photon dot real time dot type lobby dot default. There you go, the default lobby, I don't care. So that'll be the command to join the room. Now that I have joined the room and I press the button start to do this, please don't press button start again. So let me say button start <laughs> dot set active false. Turn the button off again. And did we update the uh, screen to say what we're doing? No, so let's do that. So we say um, joining room plus room name. Okay, we'll say that on the status window so we know what's going on. So now how do we know when we finally join the room? Well, guess what? There's an over override function for that. There's a bunch of overrides. So I press start, I'm trying to join the room. Now let's see, let's do public override again. Now let's search for it. 
on join room on joined room there we go when we join the room this will happen so what do we want to happen when we join the room because we're ready we're ready we got we got in a building we got in the lobby and now here we are in the room so what we're going to want to happen is we're finally going to want to load the, the um the game level <sighs> so let's see um so we want to go to scene manager right there and it's not going to know what this is until I add Unity Engine Scene Management. Oh, it's added. That must be great. That must be uh, Unity 2019 does that stuff. It adds it for you. All right, so scene manager dot load scene. And the, the name of our scene is level. Okay. And that's all this script had to do. It just had to connect. And then after it connects, it'll give me, you know, it'll wait for me to press start. And then when I press start, I say, you know, I have a room that I want to join. So I don't have a lobby to pick rooms. I'm just saying I want to join a room called room one. And this joins room one or creates it if it doesn't exist. And then once I joined, I could load the scene. So that's about it. That's what this network controller has to do. Um, what am I missing here? Something. Oh, in order for scene manager to load scene, this is just a unity thing that I have to have in the build settings, the scenes that are in my build. See, so right now there's no scenes in the build. So let's go ahead and add them. Let's see in the scenes window. Oops, I had this extra sample scene by default. I could delete that. All right, so first scene is a menu, and then the second scene is level. So when the game starts, since this is zero, the menu is a thing, you know? And close that. There, that way this load scene will work. Okay. And save. And I know I kind of made a level one scene here. We started, right? We started with the dog. It's just really small right there. So anyway, let's, let's see if we get to the part where we connect, and it's going to join this scene right here. So when we go back to menu and press play, let's test out what we got. Testing out what we got. So here it's connecting the server. It connected. I press start. Uh, I never connected the start button to anything. So stop. <laughs> uh, let's see. I'm going to move this up here like this. Here, the canvas, I have this button start, right? And here, it, I never added what to do on click. So let's add what to do on click. Um, we're going to read it from this network controller. And in network controller, there is a function that we wrote that's public called button start click. Yep. So that way, when you press this, it calls button start. Right, let's try that one more time. All right, let's press play and see what happens. Play, we're connecting, we're connected. Then start to join room one. We're in room one. There we go. So we're getting there. Now we finish with the menu. Let's go to the level. So I'm going to load the level scene. So like I said, one of the things you have to do is here is these facing forward. Let me turn that like that so the controls make sense to me. Okay, you know, you can see Z a little bit there, popping out the corner. So let's see, let's go back to our steps here. Where are you, step window? uh where are you step window where are you here you go all right so step three is done um now we're in the level so in the level we have to make a game controller script to load the player prefab all right so we should have a player prefab to load so the bulldog is going to be the player prefab that i want to load as my player the player prefab needs two scripts from the photon um sdk the first script is oh well i just typed the word photon in here so i can see the photon scripts the first script is the photon view so that this object is visible in the multiplayer settings and then the second script i need is the photon transform view so notice in the search i typed photon that's how come it's limiting a list here photon transform view which will give my position to the other instances of the game and when i give the position i can give the position the rotation and the scale i guess if you're not going to be growing or shrinking you can leave scale off send less information what's this blah 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 okay so I have these two scripts, and right here, the observed components, I'm going to have to drag this in here and tell it, bam. Okay, so photon view, photon transform view, and drag and drop, bam, right there. So let's save that. Let me see. Well, also, I guess we're going to need a script to actually control the dog, right? So let me just make a new script here. Oh, this is the My Player script to control the dog. So let me pick dog, and I'll just drag and drop the My Player script on the dog, on the bulldog. There you go. Bing, bing, and oh, it has a caption so we can print which dog this is. Because as we're like playing the game, you're going to be able to tell which one is you. you. So we could just add something little in there, like a, um, a 3D text object. Okay. And then on that 3D text object, let me say bulldog. Not bulldog, bulldog. Bulldog. And we'll just have it in the middle center. And then let's just raise it up above the bulldog somewhat, like there. Okay, so moving around, you have a label above you. So it looks a little fuzzy, so let's just make the font bigger. Where is that? Um, this is, oh, let's call this caption. Caption and the character size, oh, font size, let's increase it up. Oh, that's really big. 
but then we'll use the character size to 0.1 to make it small. And now it's not all pixelated. It's nice and smooth looking. Cool. All right, so we got our bulldog. Let's go back to the bulldog level. We have the two scripts we need, the photon view and transform view. And we have the script to control, which this is something I wrote. It's just a simple control script, you see, where I have my move speed and turn speed. And uh, uh, over here in the start function, it's going to look for the caption child object by looping through all the children. And then I'll set the text to the um, name bulldog. And then here is the view ID. So for this object, that's a multiplayer object, this is the ID of this object. So I'll do that. And then here in the update, um, if this photon view script is mine, like this is my player that I joined in the game since there's other players, then I'll do the controls. There we go. All right. So that's the, um, movement script. And these two guys are grayed out. I don't need them. Goodbye. Keep everything simple. Oh, and I'm sorry. You can't see what's at the edge there. There you go. All right. That's the player script. So let me just check that I could move around my bulldog with the, um, player script. I don't know if I could run this with the photon things on it, but let me try to move my dog around before I make a prefab out of him. So let me press play. And I can't move the dog around. Why not? I thought I put the script on there. Um, here are the caption, text mesh. Okay, so I'm just gonna trust that this is gonna work. What I have to do here is turn this guy into a prefab, put him in the folder, cha-chink, and he could be a variant, a prefab variant. So let me just name this, what after word, variant bulldog. Okay, so this is gonna be the prefab that Photon's gonna use. And it has the two things Photon needs. It needs the Photon view, just to see it in the other game. And then the follow the movements, it has the transform view. All right, so now that that's here as a resource, I could delete ya. And file, save. Oop, but let me check my steps here. What else do I need? Um, I kind of skipped to step five and made the multiplayer prefab. You see this? But I didn't make the game controller that loads the prefab, so let me do that. So when the scene loads, let's put a controller here. And just call this game controller. There's an empty game object. I'm calling it game controller, and let me just reset it for the heck of it. So here's the game controller, and now I need a script for it. So let me go back up to the assets level, and I'll start typing a uh, game controller script. It's going to be really small. Create C sharp script game controller controller, and uh, put you on there. Okay. Hello. Did you do it? No, I don't think you did. Yes, you did. Now let's go edit it. And as usual, let me cut this out. Cut that out. So here, the game controller is going to be interacting with Photon Network to load up something. So I'll derive it off of model behavior pun, which is part of the Photon pun. Okay, there you go. Now it's lit up. So what I'll do is I'll, I want this to run before other things run. So I'll use the awake event of model behavior and I will um, instantiate a bulldog prefab. Okay, so let's see. Hmm. All right, let's say game object. No, 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 no. Let's say photon network dot instantiate, instantiate. There we go. Now I'm going to give it the name of the object in the resources, bulldog. Okay. And I want to give it a location to spawn in. So there's a position dot zero. And there's a rotation. So quaternion dot identity. And what else? Nothing else necessary and close it. All right, so cool. When this starts, it'll make the player. All right, save it. Okay, cross the fingers time because let me save the scene. And 000 is probably in the floor. <laughs> so what I probably want to do is make sure that the floor is lower than 000. So I'll just lower the floor by minus um, five. There you go. That way it'll fall. And the other thing I probably want to do is fix the camera so that the camera is lined up with everything here nicely and I can see my whole scene. There. There we go. Okay, and let me set the camera there. I select the camera and press Control Shift F and now the camera view matches that. File save. All right, so let's see if this works. We have to start from the menu. So we go to the menu scene. We press, um, we're going to press play. And it's going to connect to our Photon tutorial server. Connected. Then I'm going to press start to join the room and load the level. There we go. And there's my bulldog. And I could move him. So that's cool. I notice he's floating. I guess I could add a rigid body so he could drop to the floor. So let's go ahead and go to the bulldog and add a rigid body. Add component. Um, oops. Got to take off that search. Physics. Rigid body. And I'll have a rigid body. He'll float to the floor. I'll make him weigh like 20 pounds. 
Um, but he's going to need a collider. So let's add a physics a mesh collider since, you know, this is an odd shape. Where, where'd you go? Right here. And I'll just say convex. There. So I updated my bulldog. Now let's try this again. I'm on the menu scene. Press play. Connect to server. Start. And there's my dog. Roof. He's moving around. Okay. And his ID is 1001. Now let's build this and see if the multiplayer parts of it work. So I'm going to build a solution. Um, I'll just make a folder here in my project. I'll call it builds. And I'll put the build in there. Select that folder. I said build and run, baby. So build, 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 build. So this is a new a new game, so and it's gonna go across the network. So my Windows firewall is like saying, hey, you sure? So I'm okay. I'm okay with that. Allow it. Oh, and the game went full screen on me. I didn't want that. I forgot to do that, but here it is. Yeah, because now that it's full screen, I, I can't see two screens at once. So how do we get out of this? Uh uh, I'll just close that. Oh. Dang it. Oh, where'd it go? It, oh, yeah, oh, here you are. Close you. Okay, so I, I close it. So, so that doesn't open full screen. Let me go to build settings, player settings, player, and somewhere over here. Oh, here it is, full screen window. I'll say windowed, and I'll just make the size smaller. 800 by 400 or something like that, 500. Okay, so I could have two of them on my screen. Save that. And do build and run again. dun dun dun, -dun. Close you. All right, that didn't take too long. So here it comes. It's connecting. I press start, and this will be my first dog. Put you down here in the corner, okay? You guys can see him. And up here, let me um make some more efficient space here. So for my second instance, I'm just going to run it right from Unity. My menu screen, I press play. Connecting servers. And I say start. And here is another bulldog. So there's this only has one bulldog. And over here I have two, so something's wrong because I didn't see this bulldog in this. Here's the, yeah, so something's wrong still. We're going to fix that. So I believe what has to be wrong is something about my prefab because it's not in both scenes. So let's go check over our bulldog and let's just open that prefab up. Here's the bulldog. So let's see. Um, yeah, caption gets set at runtime. So I should just make that private instead of public since you can't set it at design time. <sighs> Bulldog, where are you? Now we got the photon view, and we got the photon transform. So um, that's good. Hmm. Maybe this has to do with the network controller. So I'm going to look at the network controller. And here's where I connect up. Let's see if there's... There's something I was reading here, photon network dot automatically sync scene. I wonder if that value is not true. It means it loads the same scene for everybody. I wonder if this will do the difference. Yeah, so what this means here is that all players, same scene. Okay, so let me press save. Let's see if that's what it was. So let's build the game again. Okay, so um, file, build and run. Okay, um, start, there's one bulldog. And then here in Unity, I'll start another. Start, and I just wanna see if it pops in both of them, okay? And okay, now I got it, and they're both moving around. Now, I guess since they both spawned like right freaking next to each other, they kind of fall on each other and they're bouncing off of each other. So here comes like the last part of the tutorial here is going to be having like different spawn points for each player. So that's going to have to be controlled here in the game controller. So let me go back to the level scene. Level. Okay, here we are. And here's the game controller. So let me just identify some points for spawning. So here's a here's a point one. And just so we could see it in the scene since it's an empty game object, I'll give it a visual and zoom in. It's way up there in the sky. We will put this um, closer to the floor. Because I think the floor is minus 5, okay? So let's put this as minus, minus 4. Give it a little bit to drop. And we'll put this one on this side over here. And then we'll make another one, Control-D. And we'll put that one on this side. So we have two spawn points. Name this one, point 2. There. And we got two spawn points that the game controller has. So now when it's doing the spawning, we could pick a spawn point 
based on which player you are. So let's say that first, the, you're not, you're just player zero, but no, actually I could equal the photon network dot the current room dot player count. So when you're coming in, you're a player, you're either first player or the second player, or if we had three, then it'll be the third player, but we know we're just testing with two. So it'll be one or two. So we're going to go through an array though. So we'll say minus one. So it's zero and one instead of one and two. And then we have to know what the spawn points are. So let's just let the user tell us public transform spawn point. Okay. Bam. So those two spawn points we made as children. Let's go back here and tell, let's tell the game controller what they are. So we have two of them. So I'll say two of them. And the first one is this one. And the second one is this one. Yay. Okay. So now we have this one point. So now um, I is going to be which point we're using, right? So instead of vector three, zero, we'll say spawn point at I dot position. And for the rotation, we'll say spawn point at I dot rotation. And this should solve the problem from them jumping on top of each other. So once again, we go to build it and run it. Build and run. So the first player should come off on the on the left, and the second player should come off on the right. So it's going to run here. There we go. Start. And comes off on the left. All right. And then the second player, let's do it from Unity here. Oopsie. And play. And start. Comes off on the left. There we go. So now they don't drop on each other. So that's the um, end of the tutorial. Is just about how to use Photon to get these two things in. I had another video where I used the Mira, um, the Mira networking. And um, now that I've used both the Mira and the Photon, I actually like the Photon one better because I don't have to type in IP addresses and it's kind of easier to set up the menu, the menu system and the whole lobbying and room thing with the Photon one. So I recommend the Photon over the Mira. I was having trouble um, doing, I had more trouble doing this with Mira than I did with Photon. So thanks. See you again later. Wow, you made it to the end of the video. I'm so proud of you. Maybe you want to see more videos. And maybe you want to check out my website, omarvision.com, where, in the tutorial section, it's a collection of all the videos I've ever made. And these blue links are the actual projects, and the orange links under the videos are the actual assets that are used in the videos. And if you want, you could also search here. Much easier for things. If you're looking for something, you type in a word and press search, and it will reduce the videos that show anything about what you just typed in. Hey, drop me a like. Drop me a subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Bye.